All right, welcome back, people of the internet, to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And today's episode is a little bit different. So, uh, as promised quite a while ago, as you may remember, uh, we Mm -hmm. said that if we got 5,000 ratings on Apple Podcasts for the Waveform Podcast, that we would do a Hot Ones episode. Yes. I think that was pre-video podcast. That's how long ago we promised It was quite a long time ago, so I'm sure a lot of people have rated since then, have no idea what they're contributing towards, (laughs) but we did actually surpass that, and so uh, with Sean Evans' approval, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and do a Hot Ones-style episode with the actual hot sauces from one of the recent seasons. I think the most recent season. Most recent season. Mm -hmm. So that's... Who knows how that's going to pan out? I have no idea. We have some questions prepared. Adam's going to hop in and we're going to talk while eating super spicy food. But before that, we have some quick hits because there's still always tech news and tough tech stuff to talk about. Yeah. Actually, I kind of just want to talk about uh, our our last video that we started working on that's not out yet by the time you watch this, no. but that I have fascinating thoughts on. So we had the Ford F-150 Lightning here. We've talked about it a couple times on this podcast. Yeah, well, we had it for a day that that one time a little while ago where we shot a video about mm-hmm. it and sort of revealed our thoughts. But um, we actually, I really wanted to like live with it and review it for a full autofocus video. So that's exactly what happened. Ford actually had two here, uh, an XLT trim and a platinum trim Ford F-150 Lightning uh, that we lived with for a little over a week. So shout out to Ford for letting us make that. And so as we're working on it, we start thinking more and more about how we're shooting these car videos, because this is something we're getting more and more into. I've talked about why in the past, but we're shooting more car stuff. And one of the thoughts we had that turned out to be a great idea Mm -hmm. was to shoot the one Ford F-150 Lightning with the other 150 Lightning. Yep. So we had the red platinum trim as the subject car, and then the silver one as the follow car, where we would stick a camera out of it. We actually had uh, a couple options, but the main one that we set up was uh, we have a tow hitch Mm -hmm. rig, which has the DJI Ronin 2 on it, which has the Monstro and everything set up. And so we got to sort of get these stable shots from it. And it got me thinking, what is the ultimate car shooting camera rig? Yeah. Uh, And before everyone says you just bought a camera crane for a car and everything like that. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. The biggest part of that and the reason why we didn't use that here is like we're still doing a couple things to get the insurance correct on that and you basically need permits. You are like the biggest target in the world if you are driving that around. This is part of the equation. Yeah, exactly. This is part of the equation. So so you guys have probably seen on the studio channel, if you haven't already, definitely go watch it. We built a camera rig with a Tesla Model S, which includes a moto crane arm attached to the top of it, yeah. which can do full 360 degree moves around the car, up high, down low, all these controls from inside in it. It is incredible. Like the yeah. type of stuff you can do with it how dynamic of a shot you can make, super capable. But as soon as you take that thing on a road, Mm -hmm. all eyes are on you. You do not get to steal shots. This is the thing I've done for the past decade on this YouTube channel is I I didn't actually know that it was called this until a fellow cinematographer asked me like, oh, do you just like go steal shots in the the public or whatever? And I was like, yeah, I guess that is what Mm -hmm. we're doing. (laughs) Because she was like, you don't get permits or anything like that. I was like, yeah, we, we, I'll go to the park and just like shoot some of the phone in the park and I'll just go to some building somewhere and just go shoot on the front steps, like in the city, or I'll, I'll just shoot outside here. And anytime we start doing car videos, I, we've kind of done the same thing where you might recall shooting the McLaren in that winter. That where, was brutal. That was brutal. It that was, was like really hard. Three degrees or mm-hmm. whatever it was, but we're sticking a camera car or sticking a camera out of a window of a car next to it while we have a subject car. We're stealing shots. We don't have a permit to like use that road for filming a movie or whatever some people might choose to do. We're not Top Gear, but we do want to shoot the car in a natural environment. Exactly, so that's our yeah. best way of doing that quickly and efficiently. So the camera rig that we've built with the Tesla. Uh, you don't get to just drive around roads and start swinging the crane Mm -hmm. around and stealing shots on public roads. I mean, for example, we brought it to this really beautiful park. This was in winter, so there's like literally no one at this park. Empty. We were in a parking lot, and the camera's not even rigged up on the arm yet, and we had a park ranger come up and be like, you guys can't do this. Yeah, we drove up there. But you can't. Yeah, so uh, you can imagine how quickly you'd get pulled over trying to do something like on a Mm -hmm. parkway or a highway or something like that. So 
we had the F-150s, we had the pair of them, and we had this tow hitch rig that was much more low key, right? This is why this is why I'm thinking about it as the ultimate like video production mobile. And there's probably other options that I'll go through, but it's this very low key rig on the back. We'll show a picture of it. Yeah, it's called the uh, the Kessler Kill Shock. And then yep. Oh man, I want to know the name of that. Someone created a tow hitch adapter for it, essentially. Right. So it holds up the, the Ray Rig Pro. The Ray That's Rig holds up the Kessler on the springs. Everything everything's behind the truck in like the small contained little ball. And you can drive around and people barely even blink at it because it's behind yeah. the truck. They don't see it coming. The truck passes by. The cameras. You're just two cars driving around and nobody really thinks twice about it. So we did that and we were able to get a ton, a yeah. ton of shots on back roads, on regular roads, and you'd be surprised how good uh, of a video you can make with just one camera height. We didn't go high, we didn't go low, it's yeah, just tow hitch really? height, tow hitch height the whole time. Um, and then all the other benefits of F-150 Lightning are like, there are tons of power outlets in the back of the truck, like there's lots of room inside for like Brandon's in the back with the follow focus, mm -hmm. with a huge back seat to lie across. So everything seemed like it it's was quiet. great. It was, it's a silent vehicle. It's just about as fast as anything else you're going to be able to shoot. So I was like, that that feels like the ultimate camera rig it, vehicle. It really did. Like we spent a whole day uh, and like you said, not only did like no one stop us or anything, but there's shots in this video where like we're passing people walking on the road and they don't even like turn their head or double take because they don't even notice it because the truck is so big. It's on the tow hitch on the back, even though it's a giant Ronin two and a red camera on it. Like you barely even notice it. Tiny. Um, I mean, I couldn't see it out of the rear view. It was really funny to see the backup camera and the truck constantly was freaking out whenever I had to put it in reverse because there's obviously something yeah. on the back blocking it. Um, but yeah, and it's super smooth. We had it like shock. We were going down some pretty tough back roads and it kept the shot super, super stable between right. Ronin and the, the shock mounts on it. It was yeah. awesome. The downside, you can't shoot forward. We did talk about this, though. There are and like I'm not the, the expert on this, but I know there are front mounted tow hitches that you so, can get. So the ultimate vehicle would be one of these F-150 Lightnings with a car rig on the back and a rig on the front. Or at least just a tow hitch so you can swap it or up it, when you okay. want to do. Yeah, I mean, you don't, yeah. you could ultimately ride, run both. Could do I feel both like you're at the same time. A little more of a target there. Uh, sure. A little yeah, more that's, obvious. That's yeah. a little more high key being on the front mm -hmm. of the truck. But that, that was the only downside. Like getting a shot of the back of a moving car, you could like point a camera through your windshield and look at the car, or you can like go out your sunroof and look at the back of the car. But the best way to do that that we've found has been with the crane until potentially getting a tow hitch on mm -hmm. the front of an F-150 Lightning. Okay. And then, yeah, just being able to charge, there's a literal 240-volt outlet in the back. Like, we could get infinite power for the Ronin batteries, for the camera batteries, for the monitor batteries. Everything can be plugged in on all the 120s and still have extra. Yeah, and, like, not you can be charging the batteries, and then there's still another 110-volt plug um, right underneath the license plate that's normally for your trailer because mm -hmm. you're, when you're running a trailer, it needs the lights connected to it and the brake lights, and that needs power. So you, you can literally the tow hitch directly above it is a plug and there's even a mounting space for like a v-mount uh like if the ronin is holding is using v-mount or anything yeah. like you can power and have the power sitting on the tow hitch into the ronin and then that can be plugged into the yep to the back of the truck my the one vehicle that i've thought of that i think could possibly be better than the f-150 lightning doesn't exist yet okay but it would be an electric minivan like a canoe Oh, with a sliding door, right? With a sliding door. So you can go side. So that you can get the side profile You just need shots. the side trailer hitch. I'm just kidding. Well, that no. Because no, no. <laughs> you can hold the Ronin in, in the side, point yeah. it out the side, no wind noise, and just get a side profile shot. Yeah, we shot a lot of uh, Lamborghini like that because Casey rented that minivan. That's right. That's and right. And we shot outside. And you could go on public roads pretty easily because it's... And, and your seat belted in. That's the best part. That's yeah. also like... Let's not say safe. Also, none of this is legal advice. Do not take anything we say as a legal but I mean, advice like, for shooting cars. Picture you're a cop on the side of the road, and there's a couple things you could see drive by. One, you see a camera car with a rig with a crane on top of it driving by with a thing swinging around, swinging, pointing yeah. at another truck. I'm pulling that over, yeah. probably. I don't even know why. I'm just like, I can't. What is happening? If I see the F-150 with the, the little trailer hitch we had on the back with another one following closely... I'm not thinking too hard about that. If I see a minivan with the door slid open 
50 50. Yeah. I think you could, you could attract some attention with the door slit open driving fast enough with a minivan. But I, yeah. The, the, or like the old hatchback with Brandon hanging out the back. Like, I'll, oh, I'll pull that over in an instant. I mean, we, yeah. we never really shot on real roads like that because of how dangerous that was. Like, when you see those shots of when Brandon used to hang out the back, we basically have a big parking lot behind the building that we do it in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that means the entire video is shot with the same background for the yeah. whole shoot. But generally, my my philosophy, and we can wrap up after this, my goal with these videos, and it always has been like this for the gadget videos and everything, is to give you a sense of what it's like to own it and, and be there in real life. So I put it mm-hmm. in the environment that it's normally going to be in. When I review a phone, you see the phone in my hand, in my lap, and yeah. on my desk, and things like that, which is where it lives. And with a car... You know, we want to shoot like on a track because it's super cool, but 90% of the time you're not on a track, right? Mm -hmm. You're out in the neighborhood, you're driving, you're pulling into your driveway, you're going to the grocery store. And so being able to steal shots and actually shoot the thing in the place where it's supposed to be is the biggest challenge. And I think we sort of just unlocked another little option for us there. I think... And I'm really excited for people who listen here to watch the the Finish F-150 video, which should come yeah. out next week. Um, hopefully, it's like it's some of our best. It's easily our best rolling shots we've ever done. I, I think. agree. Um, yeah. Brandon was amazing on the controls. Like we found some really beautiful back in the woods kinds of shots. It's spring. Everything's green with a red truck driving through. It just looks amazing. Yeah, it's really good. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, so let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll do hot ones. But I guess, do we still have We're, trivia before we take a break? We do. There's okay. even going to be trivia halfway through hot ones. So it's just like all levels here. This is all a, right. We have a treat of an episode for everyone. Brain today. games. All right. Question one. What year was the first Ford F-150 introduced? I'm not good with years. I'm never good with years. It's funny because on the inside of the cap, it has the first, it has the date of the Model T. Yeah, but that's a Model T. But that's, yeah, Model T. Oh, boy. I'll think about it. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back from the break. Wow. This is a, this is definitely a very visual episode, what's going on here. If you're an audio listener, uh, I apologize in advance. This is going to be way better for video. We'll, we'll try our best to, uh, and we'll sure. definitely edit out the chewing noises. Sure. So you're so, not just in your car. You've Chew. seen Hot Ones, I'm assuming. At some point, you've seen Hot Ones. Incredible show. If you haven't, my God, definitely go watch an episode. Um, what we have here in front of us is 10 hot sauce bottles. Uh, Adam, Andrew, and I also have 10 chicken nuggets, wings, whatever. Or and sub- substitutes. Substitutes. Yeah. Yeah. But what we're going to do is uh, have these uh, sort of fun, interesting, conversational type questions. They will likely get spicier as the sauces get spicier. And uh, we'll just uh, we'll go through it and we'll have some fun. This is something yeah. kind of a lot of people have wanted to do. I feel like every time you watch Hot Ones, you're like, I wonder how far I would get or how yeah, spicy I've the ones are. I've always wondered. I mean, speaking of, you have done Hot Ones. Do you have any tips for us that's going true. into oh, this? Yeah, as someone that's done it already. Yeah. True. Okay, yeah. Uh, top three tips. Number one, careful around your eyes. That's for sure. Yeah. Don't Good forget one. that one. Tip number two, uh, it's very tempting to commit to eating like the whole wing every time. You As are it be. usually they're coated I'll in finish. in whatever. Um, you are not going to want more than one bite of the okay. last four bottles. I'm just telling you right now. I only have one bite of nuggets though. Oh, so you'll be you get yeah one bite <laughs> yeah. each is fine. Okay. Um, and I would say just uh, just have fun. Just don't think just about have, it too hard. Just have fun. Don't yeah. think about your face. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. um, we're going to basically be dabbing all of these because since we're a tech studio, we don't have the biggest kitchen don't and kitchen. don't have bowls to like yeah to accurately uh toss all of these in so we will be dabbing each of them i promise we will have enough hot sauce on all of them sauce number I, one funny enough you don't know this adam's wings that he got are actually already buffalo flavored so <laughs> yeah. he's already adding a little bit of spice onto it i, I like did not sauce, realize though. that when i picked them up this morning 
So I think the format is eat the wing, then do the questions, right? Yes. Correct. Oh, yeah. So also, Adam is eating the wings here because that's what Sean Evans does. And yep. Adam wants to be as authentic the, as possible. Him and Nardwar are like the interviewee gods. So I need to watch some of those, too. Yeah. I, yeah. I need to try and get on their level. I need right. to channel them for this episode. Number one, the classic hot ones. All right, we'll go. That's All actually right. delicious. Yeah, right? See? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out to the classic hot ones. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. All right. Number one, starting easy. From Marquez, yeah. when and why did you decide on 30 FPS? Ooh, wow. Well, I never actually decided. Here's a, I have done videos that aren't 30. Really? Yeah, I did uh, a bunch of screencasts back in the day. That doesn't count. Well, I was just trying to max <laughs> out the frame rate. So I had I have some 60 FPS videos out there somewhere. Mm. Um, when did I decide on 30? I, I don't know if it was ever a conscious choice. It was just at some point I noticed that 24 looked bad. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. What, like, yeah. so do you have any old actual videos that were 24? No. Like, was your camera defaulted at 30 when you first started shooting? Yes. Past. Okay. Yeah. Here's the worst thing that ever happened to us. When we shot the uh, Elon Musk factory tour, we shot that on John's camera and we shot on two different cameras at once. We had one camera in the Ronin following us and one camera on an off angle that was mine. Mm-hmm. Mine was at 30, <sighs> John's is at 24. And so I had to sort of conform the 24 video up to 30 yeah. or conform the 30 down to 24. Which way did you go? 24 up to 30 looked even worse. Mm-hmm. So I confirmed 30 down to 24 and that video is in 24. So that whole video is 24? I never noticed yep. it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Do you think that was on accident or do you think John did that on purpose? <laughs> I genuinely, well, John shoots 24 everything. Exactly. So I yeah. figure like he just didn't remember to switch it or maybe he just never wanted to. I see you, mm-hmm. John. Yeah. I know you did that on purpose. <laughs> well played, John. That's hilarious. I always hear the story of how his biceps were on fire during that interview. Yeah, because yeah. the Ronin, the easy rig for the Ronin broke yes. or wasn't hooked up correctly. So he had to hold the Ronin the entire time just yeah. like that. Yeah, That was a solid 25 plus minutes straight of 40 Oof. pound rig. You've, you've picked that thing up. Yeah, that thing is heavy. Not fun. Not That's fun. crazy. Shout out to John and his biceps. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wing number two. Number two. What is this called? So this is a new sauce I've never tried. This is, it is uh, wax sealed and stamped on top. I think. I will say this one looks a lot more intimidating than the classic. I'm telling you one through five are fine. It's okay. six through 10 that you just, just. You gotta worry about. Just chill. My plate is just gonna have all the sauce on it. So you guys are both from Jersey. What's your favorite thing about Jersey? It's gonna be food related. <laughs> Thank you, actually. <laughs> all right. First of all, Jersey gets a really bad rap. I think we both know this. Jersey Shore. It's not even really the Jersey Shore. It's people who go to the Jersey Shore. Um, the Jersey Shore is beautiful. People who go to the- <laughs> As long as you stay away from <laughs> Seaside difference. Heights and Belmar, like mm-hmm. in certain parts of there during the summer, they get real rough. But like, I love the shore. Um, but yeah, there's some good food here. We have this thing called pork roll or Taylor ham, depending on where you live in New Jersey. It is basically just spam. It's Taylor ham. It's Taylor. You're a Taylor Ham person. Taylor Ham. Yeah. Uh, we might not be able to continue this podcast. <laughs> yeah. oh uh, no, is this like a kidding. Jersey debate that it's I'm missing a, out on? Right it now? is the Jersey debate. Oh, okay. There is not a Jersey debate. Oh, um, there's two. I'll get to the other one. What's Central Jersey? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I live. I grew up in Central Jersey. You, you could see, argue you, there is a Central Jersey. You're saying? Uh, the debate is: Is there a Central New Jersey? Here's my thing. When people say technically yes, right? <laughs> when people say North Jersey, they're talking about like the city side of it. When people say South Jersey, they're talking about the shore side of it. So like mm-hmm. I'm probably the northern side of New Jersey, but it is nothing like South. Kearney, Rutherford, like Newark area. Yeah. So I don't know. Central feels a little more anyways, I don't think I even we have great bagels, we have great pizza, and pork roll is amazing. Yeah. There's also a little bit of a pride in some of the heritage of New Jersey for me anyway. Okay. So I was born and raised in Jersey. There's a solid crew of alumni that, first of all, when I go like far away and people ask where I'm from, I kind of just default to saying New York because people know what that is. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm in London on a, a commercial shoot and someone says, where are you from? And I say, like a town in New Jersey, they don't know what that is. If I say New Jersey, they might know what that is. But if I say New York, ah, okay, yeah, I know where you're from. No further questions. I can, yeah, I can, I can understand. I'll have some anecdote, small talk, whatever. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but there is a, you know, Ultimate Frisbee was invented in New Jersey. That's a go. little bit of pride. You know, I've played for New Jersey teams my whole life. So I've went to college in New Jersey. 
it's not that I don't like New York, but I, I like the fact that I can get to New York quickly, but I have a little bit of a different ID. So that's fun. We, we're super easy, easily accessible to New York City and Philadelphia. Yeah. But being able to live in the suburbs and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Without the worst prices in the world. Not great prices. But also, yeah. Uh, New Jersey has this weird thing, too, where we host a bunch of sports teams that call themselves New York, which yep. I despise. So that's why I'm a Devils fan, because they're the only team that calls themselves the New Nets Jersey. The Nets used to be the New mm-hmm. Jersey Nets, and yep. then they yeah. moved. Back in they their moved. Uh, heyday. When they were good. Jason Kidd, Richard Jefferson. The, but the, the, best. the Giants and the Jets both play in New Jersey. Those are both New York's teams. The yeah. Red true. Bulls play in New Jersey. That's a New York team. That's all true. So we have hockey. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Is that why you're a hockey fan? <laughs> New Jersey hockey. Uh, hockey's... Uh, They're dirt cheap, too. Okay, fair. All right. Next sauce? Yep, next Next sauce. Next sauce. How's your face? I'm feeling okay. That one was a little bit That one was good, but it had a kick. It was good, but it had a kick. I was like uh, like. trying to have a straight face while you guys were talking. Yeah. (laughs) I still... The lingering of the, like, the burn you feel now, it will just, it'll just keep going. Cool. So that's the thing I've always wondered about, because we've tried the last dab. There's mm-hmm. a difference between trying the last dab and trying the last dab after 10 sauces right. back to back. Um, My theory, and we'll get more to this later, is the bomb is the most painful sauce here. Nine and 10 are just more layers on top, but mm-hmm. you're still burning from the bomb yeah. long after you eat it. Yeah. Anyway. That's like a, a good story. You yeah. want to put the climax right before the conclusion. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a downturn at the end. All right. Mm. Next question. Smartphone feature you can't wait to see disappear. When you say feature, like when I hear the word feature, I usually think of something that's good. So is this just like anything that can be in a smartphone that I want? Yeah, it doesn't need to be good. Could be something you think is stupid. It's such an easy choice. Lightning port. It's so stupid. Fair. Okay. That's a good one. I mean, I can try and think of something else, but I would like to see ultra wide selfie camera come back. I'm mad that it disappeared. Mm. I I would love to see that on literally every single phone. My brain went to things that went away that I want back. Okay. Like good speakers. Mm. Remember Boom Sound? HTC. Yeah. They did it great. It's all like crappy, like tiny slot speakers now. Mm. So I want to see those go away, but I also want Boom Sound back. Like those types of things. I I mean, don't we have a 1M8 lying around? Try using that again. Low key. That's like one of my top three favorite phones ever. It looked beautiful. Great design. It was a tank, but also like Google Play Edition M8 was yeah. sick. Hmm. Yeah. If I had to like Good. actually answer the question though, something that is there, non-programmable extra buttons. So like a Bixby button or like a That's button a that's answer. on it that you can't actually change just seems pointless. We're way mm. too far into this like industry to not give people the option for something like that. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's 2022. Wake up. We should be able to <laughs> wake, wake up, sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next. I feel like. One question this, per sauce? Is that yeah, how we're going? All right. question okay. per sauce. All right. How are you guys feeling? Totally fine. That good. one had some tomato to it. I liked it. Totally fine. Yeah, that one was really? good. Yeah. Andrew? I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> this one looks... I mean, I feel it on my tongue, which is making me scared for the rest of it. But like right now, I'm enjoying myself. My entire mouth is on fire. Hell yeah. That's what it's... <laughs> I'm excited for this. I this really, looks like mustard-based. Fun fact, I used to hate mustard as a kid. My sister liked mustard, hated ketchup. Mm. I liked ketchup, hated mustard. We had this thing one time where uh, I think we went to like a sports game. Maybe it was a baseball game or something. And my sister and I were like dared each other to try the other thing. Mm. And I remember trying mustard and being like, huh, <laughs> not Dude, that's not bad. Good spicy brown mustard. It took me way too long, but like a brown mustard is fantastic. I am it's now the mustard. reason for hot dogs. I'm a mustard person now. All right. This is sauce number four. That's a good one. Mm. Oh, my God. Okay. There's not a lot of food options around here. <laughs> Carney, New Jersey. Facts. Yeah. So, what is the perfect order from Wawa and Taco Bell? <laughs> wow. Wawa has a crazy menu. Um, <clears throat> the perfect the order? The perfect order. I do remember like a commercial recently being like, that's like the goat order. But it was like a McDonald's thing. And I was like, uh, that was stupid. That's because McDonald's always <laughs> likes to pretend that they have like the perfect meal. When yeah. It's, it's like whatever. whatever. So I can tell you what I order, but I don't know that there's any perfect best order. perfect order. I no, know. I need I, the perfect order. I, so my <laughs> perfect order is I get a hoagie with breaded chicken, uh, barbecue sauce, lettuce, tomato, um, pepper jack cheese, melt the cheese for sure. And then uh, Doritos and a chocolate milk. When you say wow. melt cheese, do you mean like toast the sub? 
Yes. Oh, man. Which they don't always, do well. I'm always on the fence about toasting it because, like, I think I like bread to just be bread, but, like, I do agree that the cheese melting is kind of nice. There's and an art to toasting being kind it. of warm. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Taco Bell, I will start this off by saying the best part about Taco Bell is there's a thousand options for super cheap. So, like, not sponsored by I, Taco I, Bell. I like, <laughs> just, I go. will be sponsored by Taco <laughs> Here Bell we go. at some point. <laughs> It's my dream in life. Um, but, like, there's a lot of things. I always switch things up. They always have, like, a fun $5 cravings box. But if, like, I had to pick one right now, chicken quesadilla. Uh, they don't have the quesarito anymore, which I really, really want them to bring back. I usually go chicken quesadilla. One of the things, probably, like, right now, the, ch- the chalupa. Mm-hmm. And then always, always, always spicy potato soft taco for a dollar. It is the... The goaded menu item at Taco Bell. Okay. Nobody knows about it. I feel I shouldn't say nobody knows about it, but it just seems so underrated. No one ever like really thinks about it. Every single time, it's my side at Taco Bell. Pretty this much, this is the most passionate I've seen you in. Like it a is week. the most passionate yeah. I've been about anything in my life. <laughs> people, family, people listening to this can probably find a Taco Bell near them. I don't know if you're anywhere near Wawa, but spicy, verify his spicy claim. potato soft taco. Fantastic! It's a dollar. I mean. You, I could just order five of those, and that could be the perfect meal there. <laughs> incredible. Um, Fantastic. Wait, 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 wait. This sauce that was, was incredible. I caught mm-hmm. some seeds. That was spicy. Yeah. The Phoenix Cantaloupe Melon and Scotch Bonnet Hot Sauce by Angry Goat Pepper Company. Terrible label. Amazing sauce. I said that a couple times on the show. Like, terrible this bottle is terrible. ugly. <laughs> terrible. That's one. Good it's sauce. not. doesn't taste like mustard, though, at all. It's cantaloupe melon. But yeah, it's was delicious. Really it's really sweet. Oh, literal cantaloupe. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. This is the fifth one. Number five, five. Los Calientes, Sauce of the Summer. Thank you, Sean. Oof, you went in. I like this sauce. Oh, God. I know, okay. I, like, I, know I like this sauce. But again, <laughs> a little nervous. You know, don't get ahead of yourself here. Yeah, I feel like you're acting like a pro now. So Mr. Beast and David Blaine both do some pretty extreme stunts on YouTube. If we were to do that on the studio channel, would you guys rather do... A long and difficult stunt, like an endurance, endurance. stunt, like an endurance stunt, okay. or quick and easy. For example, jumping out of an airplane, quick but difficult, or burying yourself for fifty hours, relatively easy mm. but long. Oh man! Wow. I will say, I, I consider myself someone uh, like I like to do some risk taker esque things. Like I'm skateboarding, I like snowboarding, myself. I like. <laughs> It's sure. I didn't want to like, yeah, yeah, I could sound, I, I sounded that lame. Um, rock climbing, snowboarding, skateboarding. I love all that stuff. Jumping out of a plane is terrifying to me. Yeah. But I it's don't done know so why. Quickly. It is. And burying yourself might be one of the scariest things I, I could think, think of. When you first said that, I was like, the quick flash pan stunt is probably harder to do, mm. which is why it's over so quickly. And then the endurance stuff is like not so bad, but I, f- I fancy myself, uh, mentally strong enough to do an endurance stunt mm-hmm. so I, I i was defaulting to that but i don't know i think i think i'd probably i would jump out of a plane i the one thing that was funny about you brought out david blaine when we shot that ascension project the person who taught david blaine to skydive mm-hmm. luke akins um he's literally skydived like twenty thousand times or something crazy in his life literal goat skydiver I've, i'll never meet someone who skydived more than him um I watched him do like several skydives out of a helicopter while we were there just to test the air. Like wow. he's that guy. Um, and then there was to test so the air after we, <laughs> yeah, like after we shot all that, he was like, bro, anytime you want to skydive, I can get you like, we'll do one tandem and you'll be free jumping out of a plane. Like I, I can teach you whatever I've blacked out in the air and woken up and landed safely. Like this is that guy. Right. Oh so he's, he's that guy. I, a couple months later, uh, recently, did you see this project where, Two people, two cousins, it was Red or Bull, whatever. Right? Yeah, 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 Red Bull. They they flew up in planes next to each other, mm. got to a certain height, nosedive the plane, skydive, jump out of the planes, swap planes, and then write the planes and keep flying them. What? It's so, like the planes, the pilots. That's what swap. they tried to do. Yeah. Did that's they what have they tried. parachutes? They had parachutes okay. as backup, but they were to do this thing over the desert, and uh, one of them crashed. One of them didn't make it back into the plane and was able and had to bail. The plane crashes. That was Luke. <laughs> oh, was it really? That was oh Luke. God. And so I saw on his Instagram later, he posted like, yeah, they'd done a bunch of like successful uh, attempts previously, just like in the time leading up to it. So mm-hmm. the one that was broadcast on Hulu or whatever did fail. 
but they did actually successfully do a pilot swap. Huh. And like that's that guy. I would be com- that guy. He could my life could be in his hands and I'd be fine. That would you get, would you be buried alive with him? Buried alive? No, that would be crazy. <laughs> I would let Luke specifically push me out of a plane and instruct me on how to land. I think I would have to go with that because buried alive is just terrifying. Yeah, Although, right. like, I'm really good at napping, so <laughs> maybe I could. Pull I was that closed off. in the trunk of the F-150 for eight seconds. <laughs> and I was like, I, need, I gotta get out of here. All right, podcast listeners heard it here first. Skydiving on the studio channel. I'm coming. not going skydiving. I'm terrified. <laughs> I will man up to say I am not a man man enough to skydive. That's that ain't Fair. my thing. <laughs> All, right. All right. How are we feeling? Halfway through. Feeling good. So here, this is the this is the turning point, right? When you play golf, it's 18 holes of golf. You get through the first three holes. You're just warming up. You get this to the is first relatable. nine. You make the turn at nine. Now you really got to move, right? This now is, you need the mental. Fortitude. This is the back. The back half of the, the back of half. This. this is okay. After we, trivia. Oh, yeah, we got to take a break. Do you want a One trivia more. and then add break? Okay, we're Let's taking a break. It. Okay. So next trivia question. By the way, the score right now, as it stands, Marquez has seven. Andrew has four. So Andrew, you got to come from I'm, behind. I'm always impressed by how close I am because I don't remember many. I got the one about my dog, right? So that's, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. All right. Websites are built using HTML. What do those letters stand for? I got that one. I know that one. <laughs> Nerdy question. <laughs> End break. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Welcome back to the second half of Hot Ones, which is where you really usually fast forward to see the guests really sweat. You didn't fast forward this time, but I'm just saying this is where it gets real. So, number six. Number six. Let's just get it started. So I will is... say my nose is leaking a bit. Hell yeah. How are That's you? That's why we've got 4K cameras. Usually, please. Sean asks at the beginning, how are you with spicy food? That's a Is it too late to ask? Point. How, are, how no, are you with spicy food? I think food? we can still talk about it. Um, I don't know. I, I like spice. I've... I'm convinced 15% of my diet is Cholula, which is like not, you know, that spicy, but I just appreciate hot sauce. Um, Uh But I very quickly get to the point where I'm like, this isn't enjoyable anymore. Um, I think we're going to be on that part soon, but I am not good at spice. Dear God. I (laughs) favorite YouTuber under 1 million subs and why? Oh my God. I'm so excited for this. (laughs) You already have an answer. Mm -hmm. Internet Shaquille. He's a cooking YouTuber. He is fascinating. I don't even know if he's doing YouTube full time yet. He might be doing it now. Really, really good cooking videos. Short, sweet, funny. He'll take times where he gives you a really good recipe. And then specifically, we'll put that recipe in the first 10 seconds of the video. So when he knows you go back to it, you don't have to scroll through the whole thing. <clears throat> really, really funny. Uh, again, I don't know. That's uh, He's hilarious. And the food he makes is amazing. And I've used his recipes so many times I can't even count. That's a good one. It actually is good food. Yeah. Mm. The one I just thought of just passed a million, so I can't use it. Well, how recently did it pass a million? I'm oh, that one caught like, up. Like a month ago. Eh, if you can't think of another one, that's fine. Julie Noki. <clears throat> okay. Hilarious. She yeah. just hit a million? Yeah. Nice. She's been she should be way lately. over a million. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to give her a shout out at 1.01 million. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Squeaking in. Yeah. Wait, All that right. one was hot. Yeah, that one was really I got hot. it. You getting water? It was good, but it was hot. Water or milk? I'm getting water. They're both getting water. We're both getting water. Yato told us not to. Doing it. He's anyway. probably. He's definitely right, but he's our resident hot sauce expert, so I believe yeah. anything he says. But also, uh, it just feels good to drink water. So, yeah. Andrew, because you were so excited about that question, I have one for you right okay, now. Okay, cool. If you can still name five items from the Maggiano's menu, I'll give you a cookie. What kind of cookie? <clears throat> Your choice. <laughs> okay. For the listeners. Oh, man. You okay, does this Maggiano's is? Maggiano's is a, um, a restaurant I worked at for quite a while, actually. Italian. It's good food. It's a chain, but it's pretty good food oh, for what it is. Yeah, it's a chain. It's actually owned by the same people that own Chili's, which is great because when I worked there, I got a discount at Chili's <laughs> also for up to four people. Oh, that's a pretty good perk. Yeah. Wow. 50% off. That is a huge that perk. That is awesome. Amazing. Chili's is pretty cheap already, too. But yeah. anyways, um, Rigatoni D. Spaghetti, meatball, spaghetti. This is going to be hard because the menu made here. I mean, that's just the pasta. Every though. Italian thing you could think of. But then rigatoni, uh, noodles, marsala, cream sauce, mushrooms, chicken, onion, chicken parm, chicken piccata, chicken marsala, rigatoni D. Rigatoni D is fantastic. You ever go it back is, and eat there? Uh, a couple times. 
still know almost everyone that works at the place I used to work at. So oh, okay. um, they're That's all awesome. They're, yeah, I worked there for a long time. But have I done five yet? Yeah, you've done like seven. Okay, cool. You definitely got the cookie. You passed. I, okay, cool. I did not think you would remember that. They had some <laughs> pretty good dessert also. I mean, they had a great tiramisu as I've well, never worked so. at a restaurant, but I couldn't tell you anything about my first job. Mine was a chain <laughs> restaurant, so like the menu had to stay the same all the time pretty much. Mm-hmm. It was like very, very specific. Yeah. So I was Fair. a caddy. That was a, you are a caddy? Yeah. Name every golf club that was in the bag. <laughs> Well, that's just <laughs> golf clubs. <laughs> Everyone had a different bag. What was the most popular brand of golf ball that people used? Titleist. Titleist. Hundred percent. Still is. Is that just because mm. it is the most popular? Yep. Wasn't there like a really big? People were like obsessed with Nike golf balls for a while. When Tiger was in his prime, Nike apparel was massive. You couldn't go to a golf course and not see, and not see tons of people with Nike stuff. But also, Tiger is Nike golf. So they mm-hmm. when they had a par- success with the apparel, they spun up Nike golf balls, Nike golf clubs, Nike golf bags, and like a lot of young kids got all that stuff. And then when Tiger left Nike or got dropped or whatever, uh-huh. Nike golf died really instantly died nobody bought the the sasquatch driver nobody bought any of the other stuff <laughs> they a, made anymore sasquatch I, driver i remember yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> when i was probably like 10 my grandparents lived on the backside of a golf course and my uh. grandpa would just collect the golf balls that got hit into their backyard and we as kids <laughs> would go sell them to the golfers that's smart Nike wow. was the most requested one there. I, were they just the most expensive and we were selling them for no, it was like just Tiger. Bucks? It was just wow. Tiger. Is right. that illegal? <laughs> no, it was lost property. <laughs> lost and found. Okay. Yeah. It probably wasn't legal to sell things on the golf course, but <laughs> oh, we were you like went tanked. onto the course. We went onto the there's a road that divided the like green and the tee for a hole, and we yeah. just sat at the fence at the road and, sold with, golf and like balls. put them in and like I would specifically always sort out the Nike ones and they were the first ones gone every time. Was it a private or a public course? I have no idea. It was probably a public course. Yeah. Okay, cool. I could see that. That's yeah. fine. All right. Was that all where right. you were going with that question? Not at all. Okay. But that cool. worked out. <laughs> all right. We're uh we're in crunch time here. These dark sauces are scary. So this looks like blood. This one has a scorpion on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah, angry that's scorpion. Looks like a okay. scorpion getting shot. This is the first one I'm not excited for. One, two, three, four. So four left. Whew, okay. I can see Marquez sweating a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm not even going to smell it. Sucks. I'm not going to smell it. This I know that'll sucks. be bad. I'm nervous. This one really sucks. Here we go. It looks like blood. Yeah, it's like dark and say? dark blood. I'm not looking forward to this one. It's like the okay. first four sauces, the first five sauces are actually sauces I would put on food. Yeah. And, and then, then you you turn. very quickly divulge into devolve. Devolve. I'm about to devolve. drink the melon one for comfort. <laughs> oh, I smell this from here. It's not even near my mouth yet. Okay. Both of you are ultimate frisbee players. What is one trend from technology that you want to see happen to the sport? I know that. I know one. A trend? Yeah. You go first because I'm stat tracking. Mm. I, better stat tracking. Yeah, really good advanced stats. So we have, it's it's starting, it's early, but um, yeah, like in the NBA, you can see not just like miles run and like efficiency from certain parts of the floor, but really dive into like when certain plays are run for certain people on certain parts of the court, how efficient are they? And maybe you start to optimize and run certain plays more often because the stats prove that you should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get teams that are analytics driven and they only run six plays because they're all the best plays for their, their numbers. I, I can't wait for that to happen in Ultimate. That's right. I mean, when we used to play AUDL, and they still do it. Oh, my God. They had stat tracking stuff. Um, I mean, like, but it was generally someone who wasn't getting paid with an iPad on the sideline. Yep. Pressing a few buttons, trying to keep up with things, and it did a very poor job. It basically was tracking goals, assists, blocks. Touches. <clears throat> and touches, yeah. yeah. Um, it would be really cool, like you said. People completion rating in the red zone, completion rating on throws over 50 yards, stuff like that. Hot zones. Hot, yeah, exactly. Turnover zones. You can start to see where uh, teams are like playing and, and scoring points on break side, on open side, like in the end zone, which way they're running. Like, yeah. Stuff like that would be really cool and could probably help grow just like offensive and defensive uh strategy right oh strategies yeah sorry i'm yeah. like constantly like thinking about swallowing as i talk and it's uh i'm feeling it it's pretty hot that is that one hurts that was that pretty rough painful. i actually it hurts but it was like a barbecue based one and it kind of had that like sweet barbecue 
in the beginning, it? but I think because it was in the beginning, thick, <clears throat> yeah, because it was thick, makes me feel like it's really coating my tongue. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard pivot. Andrew, you crashed a drone. Can you tell us about that story? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've talked about it once, but pretty much to give myself a little credit, FPV drone pre release software, we didn't have the correct credentials to be able to fly it freely. So you had to fly it within, it was like a 50 foot radius of you. And we were on the side of a building. So we we're basically just doing straight lines back and forth. Back right? and forth. Yeah. But an FPV drone is supposed to be sh- nimble and quick. And so I'm like going back and forth, dipping and turning with the FPV goggles on. And then I like come in real hot, try and do a like full speed 180 turn. And it just like dives really hard down. But it, it's hard to tell that on the goggles. <laughs> Next thing you know, I just see this like bush kind of in front of it, and it clips the bush, flips upside down, scrapes across the like probably like thirty feet on the asphalt, Yards. upside down. <laughs> Seeing that, like, it felt like I was in a car crash, and I was like <laughs> skirting on the hood, the the roof of the car. Yeah. And I just think I ripped it off and blamed obstacle avoidance or something like that. And, <laughs> That's exactly uh, what happened. <laughs> and then looked at Marquez, wondering if I was fired or not. So I'm still here, but um. It was fun. Highly, highly suggest it. We I had a second one. It's fair to say that's like a pretty solid ocean story. I'm going to have to beep that out later. Mm-hmm. But what's your favorite ocean travel story from when you guys were going to interview people or going to conventions or CES, anything like that? I can kind of think of one. First Bill Gates interview. Uh, the, yeah. Plane gets. <clears throat> we brought everything. Did we bring Travel iMac? I think we brought Travel iMac yep. for that. Yep. Uh, we had lay, a layover, in, layover Chicago. in Chicago. Big snowstorm. Gets delayed. We waited in Newark basically till the point where our connecting flight left. And then um, we decided we, we're not going to make this. We're going to have to reschedule. They tell us, go downstairs. You can wait at baggage claim and get the stuff you checked on the plane because the plane's not taking off like anytime soon. Yeah. Sit there. People at baggage, baggage check tell us that we can get it, but we're going to have to wait for a little while. We waited for three hours at baggage claim. Finally went up again and asked somebody, and they're like, I don't know who told you that. There was no <laughs> chance you were getting that. And then the iMac, all our tripods, a ton of equipment just gets shipped off to Seattle for us to not come for like yeah, almost a week, I think. Wow. It had to lay over and everything. <laughs> it laid over. Wait, so made it to, to it? They kept it. In Seattle. So it arrived at Seattle, and then they called me, and they were like, hey, your stuff's at the airport. And I was like, I know. I'm not there. (laughs) And so they kept it. They have this room where they keep bags, and they just kept it in there. Mm -hmm. So a couple weeks later when we flew out, we picked all our stuff up at the airport. We landed there, and we were like, he got all our stuff? And they're like, yep. And then we picked it up. Was there like a red camera in there? Do you know? No, because we always travel with the red on us. Keep that. Keep that with you. Keep that thing. But tripods and travel computer and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right, next sauce. Yeah, are you guys? Uh, I feel like we're that? really. <clears throat> oh no! Uh, oh, I forgot the about it. Is next. Okay, I am dying. Can you smell? I want you to see. <laughs> I want you to see if this smells like the one because the bottle is different than what they have online. But I have a feeling Hot Ones just bought as many of the original bombs as possible, and now they just have a different bottle. <laughs> I'm genuinely concerned for Sean Evans' intestines. <laughs> How does he do this? They're going to study his body. Yeah. This is insane. And he has it multiple times. Like, I would imagine they have shoots stacked up. Yeah, like he's on two a days. That's crazy. Two a days. He's on two a days. That's crazy. That just like. Oh my God. I'm like a little lightheaded. Okay. I'm really not looking forward to this. This is the bomb. I was very excited about this show until this moment. (laughs) Yeah, I was too. Okay. Cheers, fellas. Oh, that has a kick. Oh, you just wait. What was your weirdest fan experience? Just goes straight to the back of your throat. (laughs) And like, yeah. And then just, (laughs) you're feeling it. Weirdest fan experience. Weirdest fan experience. Could be positive, could be negative, whatever. I'm just going to try not to do milk till the end. That'll make me I'm trying to like not touch my eyes. That won't happen. Okay, careful, careful on your eyes. Yeah. Careful on your eyes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know what's funny? Uh, 
I'll sometimes be out with like the team or something, and then someone comes up and recognizes me and says hi, takes a picture. And they're like, how often does that happen? It's actually usually not too bad because <laughs> most tech fans, we don't really go out that much. <laughs> so, fair, fair. So, Hard to meet people on Valorant. Yeah. yeah, like there's there's like there's like actually famous people where they go outside, and as soon as they go outside, it's awful, and you can't go anywhere. Um. <clears throat> Luckily, we don't have that. So, shout out to everyone who's very respectful and and nice. And you know, I take pictures of people. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have any weird. Huh. Andrew, do you? I mean, CES, like you have some people that are half fan, half trying to sell you something. Like there was a guy trying to sell you on these iPhone cases once at CES, and the first question you asked him was like, "Oh, do you have one? I have an iPhone 12. Do you have it for that?" He's like, "We don't have that one yet." And it's like. It's hard to pitch this when you don't have the most recent iPhone. Um, but that's more of like a sales thing. Mm. We've had really good fan experiences. Um, okay, what I was mean, your favorite? Huh. Anyone who recognizes me feels pretty <laughs> awesome. I've actually been noticed at the climbing gym a couple times recently, and that really? makes me feel kind of sweet. But then they probably see me climb and are like, that guy sucks. <laughs> um, I, I guess I could kind of pivot this to the things I feel the worst about, like, it's weird saying fan experiences, but <laughs> the ice cream you know, viewers, <laughs> viewers of the, the show, oh um, I've had people tweet at us saying, Hey, I saw you guys at blah, 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 but I didn't want to disturb you and come say hi. And I feel bad about stuff like that. It's like the people who are being that respectful are generally the people we want to say hi to and yeah, like totally hi. down to say a picture. <clears throat> if you ever are in a scenario where you see someone on YouTube that you enjoy, just take context into like, if they're maybe shooting something chill for a minute and then like if you see them taking a break just be like hey what's up just wanted to say hi blah blah blah. i think we're always down to take a picture we're always down to meet people um if you see someone like you know with their family eating dinner or stuff like a quick hi might be fine and stuff like that um like i said i like saying hi but just like don't interrupt we've been shooting stuff and people will just like oh i love your stuff like when we're very obviously have cameras pointed on stuff and then that's just like (laughs) I can't annoying. believe how many words are coming out of your face. How right are now. you doing? I, I'm trying to distract myself. Yeah, you're sweating. Oh, you're sweating. I'm, I'm trying like not, a quarter of the way through this ice cream. I'm trying not to. Bre- yeah, I've suddenly started chugging milk. Um, oh. uh, I mean, my tongue, my tongue hurts, but oh, I just touched my. Don't, I think we're good. Um, I think we're good. But okay. Um, would you agree with everything I said? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, just making sure I'm not talking for Marquez and he's like, don't ever fucking talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last YouTube? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. I'm Ooh. so glad we put Adam on camera. He was going to do this off camera. Um, the last YouTube video, movie, or TV show shot that you saw that blew your mind? The last one? That's so hard. Can I tell you one of my favorite shots ever in something sure. that I will always bring up? Marquez, are you all right? <laughs> There's an episode. I'm going to run out and see you <laughs> There's an episode called Crossroads in Band of Brothers. And it's this scene where they're, there's a crossroads, obviously. And the, the group that you're following is uh, trying to move past this. But they see that um, there's like some German soldiers at that crossroad. And they're all in a trench. But they have to advance towards that hill where the road is, and um, there's a show about war, by the way. It's right? a show. For it's World War Two. It's yeah. like a it's a TV series. They're all about an hour long. Fantastic um, series. Really, really good series. <clears throat> um, but basically, they call they throw some smoke grenades and they call everyone to charge, and everyone starts charging before the smokes pop, or one guy starts charging and then the smokes pop, and it's this just like beautiful shot of all these soldiers running through the smoke. And I just think it's one of the like coolest pieces of film or whatever that I've seen. Andrew, how are you doing this? <laughs> I just like feel like I actually got like one more spice, one piece further back in my throat. I as you said that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you uh, on the way down now? No. Still going up? <laughs> yeah. All right. Then what's your favorite shot? I'm going to get fired for <laughs> suggesting this. No. Um, and I actually just recently watched the Top Gear F-150 Lightning review and they have a shot where a hot air balloon flies over the top of the truck. How? 
<laughs> flies over the top like uh, like they they go under 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 the bumper and point up to the sky and the front bumper is in the shot and then a hot air balloon goes over the top. What? Oh, that's how amazing. do they get? How do they even find? The, line up the shot and know that it's going to come over. Do you think they saw a hot air balloon and was like, let's get this shot? Or did they like rent the hot air balloon? And no, they definitely, that? I think they, I think they saw it coming, lined it up and just nailed it. And I appreciate that's, that. It's always more impressive when it's like YouTube stuff because you know that's not fully planned. If that was in a movie, you know they hired that balloonist mm -hmm. um, and everything. Yeah. Balloonist. Balloonist? <laughs> is that what you call it? Yeah. What is the word? I guess just I pilot? Yeah. Pilot for I, yeah, the hot air Pilot. I like balloonist. John Lee's mm -hmm. a balloonist now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Old old ultimate friend. Mm -hmm. Also played on that. Portland really? Nitro. Poorly stat tracked Hammerheads team. <laughs> He's playing for Portland now. He is. I definitely touched my nose because I can feel it in one of my nostrils now. Who is your dream guest for the podcast? Huh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Podcast. Any, you could you could get anyone. Not the I, podcast specific. Right, right, right. There's yeah. a difference. I, yeah. I, I, there's people who I want to have on the channel yeah. and just talk tech for 12 minutes. Yeah. And there's people I want to have on the podcast and pick their brain for an hour. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this before. Actually, uh, Tim asked us this once. I have a couple. On the podcast? or No, not on the podcast. Oh, okay. We just talked about it randomly. Oh, it. Uh, do you have an answer? I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have one. Off if the I bat. could just like pick somebody that I don't necessarily would be great for a tech podcast, but John Oliver would be amazing. Uh, I think he great. makes some of the best. I know it's for HBO, but like most people watch it online. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Um, someone who I think would be really good. Lando Norris is an F1 driver, but he also has a YouTube channel that he has people that work on it and they do like F1 gaming and F1 tech stuff. And yeah. I just think that combination of professional athlete and also like, Doing really well in the social media world could be a fun combination that could work on the podcast pretty well. Yeah, I thought of two. Okay. Uh, Chris Paul. Oh, I want to talk to him one. about just like... <laughs> sports. Everyone got excited except for me. <laughs> sports strategy. I just want to be like, just walk me through like a defensive possession, like mm. everything you were thinking about during this possession. Mm. I would love to do that with film. I would just, I would just watch film with him. Yeah. And, Film session. And, and Derek Blasberg. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that another basketball player? No, the guy <laughs> from um, the Met Gala, who's just... Oh, De oh yeah. that we talked about before. He's just, okay. He's everywhere, man. I want to yeah. talk to that guy more. I mean, he has done a lot of YouTube stuff. <clears throat> he could explain the fashion world to us. That's true. That's an angle the, we have the not The YouTube fashion world. Explain yeah, the fashion know. world to me, Derek. Explain fashion. Please. While eating 10 spicy wings. Yes. Sure. There's a lot of questions on the bomb. Yep. All right. Number nine. Yeah. Way I to linger to, on that yeah, one. Yeah. I wanted to sneak a couple in there. <laughs> this one's called Pucker Butt, so we'll be fine. <laughs> this, if I remember correctly, the guy who owns this company is the guy who created the pepper that Apollo is the Ooh. last one is based on. You dumped. That Why did one. I do that? Oh, it's green though. I remember in the show they've talked about this actually tasting pretty good for. Oh no, mm. that's that. I know that smell. Oh, okay. This that comes out fast. <clears throat> the really hot ones just have a certain Ooh. smell. Uh, I try not there's to smell. there's well, got to be a specific right now, pepper so. in yeah. here that is that smell. I want to say it's scorpion, but like you can just smell it and you like gag a little bit because you know how much pain you're gonna be in. Cheers. What was your first cell phone, smartphone, or piece of tech in general? Samsung Samsung flip phone. A flip phone. Do you remember the model? No, it was blue. <laughs> LG Voyager's first smartphone. Then I had the Motorola Droid. And the first piece of tech that I really bought was the iPod Touch. Really? Mm -hmm. The one that just went out of... Um... The one that's gone now. Oh, that's it was sad. stolen at school two weeks later. Damn. <laughs> did, did you ever find out who stole it? No. Uh, I was stolen during swim class out of my locker. You had swim class? Yeah. You went in the Damn. pool at your public school? Columbia High School had a mandatory swim class. So did I mine, but I didn't go in. The final it exam sounds super so useful. Bad. The final exam was to tread water for 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, you did tell me about that. Yeah. That's crazy. For the whole class. <clears throat> there it is. It finally hit Andrew. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm trying to do it away from the microphone. Wait, you didn't have <clears throat> a lock on your locker? I think I lost my lock. Mm. So I put it in the locker, closed it, but it wasn't locked, and then my iPod was stolen because smart kids look at the lockers and the locks. Um, question. I'm not a chocolate <laughs> milk. First piece of tech? First cell phone, smartphone, and piece of tech. First, first cell phone, I don't even remember the name. I feel like I was in seventh grade, so this was probably... How old were you in seventh? This was probably 2000, 2002. 
2002. Yeah. And it was you just like something funny. There are people listening to this right now that weren't even born yet. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shout outs. Um, I don't know. It was like the most basic cell phone ever. I do not remember a name or company. I just do remember that flip, not flip. Oh, pre flip. Whoa, what? Um, and yeah. oh. there may have been no. There were there were some flips out, but those were like the nice, expensive ones. Ah. I just know it was indestructible. My friend would constantly be like. This phone can survive anything and take it and just throw it at the wall and the was battery would pop out. It wasn't, but it was like Sounds similar like to that style mm. back then. It had an antenna that you pulled out. That was amazing. It was like the OG fidget spinner. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a slow um, burn. Yeah. This yeah. one's it keeps attacking. It's getting worse. Um my first smartphone I did I was the Voyager into the Eris route. Yep. You were Voyager into Droid, right? Yeah. I feel like I was on the I was the that was the budget, the Eris. I remember that little ball though on the bottom. My mom had the Eris. Did she? Yeah. It was the way less cool version. Trackball. Um, and then first piece of tech like I bought or Um, yeah, let's go with that you bought. Like with your own money. My allowance money. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What was your allowance? Uh ten bucks a week to, Mine too. to take out the yeah. trash and the recycling and tie up all the papers and all that stuff yep. every day. Oh. And I had to do dishes and the lawn. And the lawn. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Wow, it builds character. Yeah, <laughs> I went out. I took the trash out once, and there was a raccoon in the trash room. <laughs> you got fifteen bucks that I, week? No, I didn't. I asked for a raise, didn't get it. <laughs> Those are first yeah, lessons in negotiating. Yeah, I was like, you need hazard pay for that. Listen, OSHA has a word. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first piece of tech I bought. Oh man, I don't know if I really remember that all that well. Probably like an Xbox 360 or or like you bought an Xbox 360. Well, or maybe it was big baller over yeah. here. <laughs> uh, how old is that? I think I was in college by that point. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Yeah, or end of high school. What yeah, game did part, you play? Like, what was your go-to Halo, game? Halo, Halo. I mean, Call of Duty too, but Halo. Mm. Right answer. That was a test. Correct. Okay. Are we ready? Uh, this is it. The last one. What yeah. is it called? So this last one's called the last dab. Yeah, we call it that because it's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last one. You don't have to, Andrew and Adam, but oh my god, <laughs> but you can if you want to. That is a great Sean Evans. Impression. I mean, we have to put the last dab on, or else it's just a plain chicken oh. wing here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine has a little buffalo, so I think. Oh, I'm yeah, fine. Fair. Have you been feeling that? I'm yeah, feeling it's everything. like adding. Okay. There's no more ice cream, and I'm half with you in my mouth. Oh my goodness, you're my done mouth. with your ice cream? You ate a pint I of ate ice cream. A pint of ice cream. That's awesome. It did help, though. Thanks to Hayato for uh, suggesting that because <sighs> ice cream works way better than the milk. Adam, do not eat all of that. Really? Do not eat all of that. That's a. I'm just chunker. telling you right now, don't <laughs> eat all of that. Oh my God. I was going to say, it was like Hayato right here, like on your shoulder. Like, oh yeah. no. I'm, I feel like a child now for. Okay. Basically, every morning you guys play pool. How did that start? That was a mistake. Got a pool table. Oh, this is a mistake. Wanted to use that. So we started playing pool every morning. You just bought a pool table? Well, <laughs> it was an empty studio for a while. No, there's a longer story. Hold on. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Oh. A pool table is a pretty random buy just for the hell of it. <laughs> Rec area. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Last CES? No, two CESs ago from when we went. We stayed at the Hardwood Suites with D-Brand. They had a pool table. We played all week because the D-Brand guys are really, really good at pool. Oh, my God. <clears throat> we really enjoyed it. So when we moved down here, it was between pool table or ping pong table, and we picked pool table. Yeah, I was going to try to get a combo table. Mm. But those are bad at both. No, I have to yeah. go milk. Ours is way better at being so, a pool table. We could have gotten a ping pong table that's only a ping pong table, or a pool table that's only a pool table. Mm. Well, a pool table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if Mac was voiced by a celebrity, which celebrity would it be? Hmm. <laughs> I feel like oh. you need to answer this first because I might be biased. Based on like his antics and his behavior? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Um... Yeah, his little fluffy tail roaming around the studio. Yeah, and just like pops up like you got yeah. food. I, I like food. Um, Guy Fieri. <laughs> uh, food is what I thought about. 
Crazy hair. Crazy hair. Everyone loves him. See, for me, he's like a, a, a he's like a rock. Like he's a strong person. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. No, not the Rock. Oh, oh. he's a strong <laughs> no, I personality with, with a heart of gold. So I'm, I'm going small. with Gordon Ramsay. Oh man, <laughs> hmm. I actually thought uh, of that. Uh, huh. Uh, I'm wow. quickly running out of milk. This yeah, is, we'll I just need to think of something. There's fast. plenty more. It's warm too. Okay. Uh, he would be. I can't think. <laughs> this is very, uh, very difficult. This is this feels worse than when I did the the show. It might have gotten hotter since then. Oh my god. He would he would be, <clears throat> um, James May from Top Gear. I love Ooh, that answer. That is good. That is the best answer, and that is what I will continue to tell everybody for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. James May. Yeah. What is the video that you guys had the most fun working on? Honestly, Acura NSX. Ooh. Just like everything went so well. Living with a supercar, fun concept. Had a track day, just a fun thing to do. Mm. Met cool <clears throat> people, went on a cool trip. Wait, like, can you explain the track day? How did that happen? This is a first... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Acura, um, this was, we'd done autofocus video with the Tesla Model 3. This is another high-tech car, but it's a, it's a supercar. So when Acura <laughs> dropped off the car, they were like, we booked a, a day for you at this track. So live with the car for a week, shoot what you want, and then meet us at 8 a.m. at this track, and we'll show you what this car can do. And then, we, then that was that part of the video. It was mm -hmm. great. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, I like, I kind of have to, oh I was a big Casey Neistat <laughs> fan before I started. And within two months we were doing his studio tour and he was just super nice, super accommodating, really fun day. So that, that'll always kind of be, I think, one of my favorite videos. Do you remember like shaking his hand at that moment? Mm -hmm. Saying hi? It's on video. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it. I got to check it out. We'll put it up on screen now. <laughs> I think I totally played it cool. <laughs> and then asked for a picture with him later and then posted it and spelled his name wrong. Mm. On Twitter? How did you spell it? <laughs> Might have been on Facebook. I, I thought there was a, it was like, I thought it was DT at the end for some reason. Oh, okay. Nice thought. Nice stat. Nice. I'm out of water and chocolate milk. All so. right. That's a great place There's, to end it. Yeah. <clears throat> end it up. That's it. <clears throat> you want to do the. Uh, Good. Answer the trivia questions. Oh, fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got to finish it up with the trivia answers. Finish strong. Finish. What strong. a chaotic episode this has been. You're making me feel bad for bringing this. I still have to edit this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Question nice. number one was: year. What year was the first F-150 introduced? 1943. Final answer. <laughs> I'm going to guess 65. Are we doing closest year? Do you want to do who got the closest, or do you want to do no points if you didn't get it? How about you give us each a year on either side, and then if no one gets that, just no points. Okay. So, like, if I said 65, four, five, six work. Okay. Marquez, what was your answer again? World War. It's not a world war. 19, <laughs> 1955, final answer. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one gets any points today. Yeah. The answer is 1975. Okay. okay. That's way later than I thought. Mm. Same. <laughs> you have to do ads after this. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These, this is going to be the spiciest ad read that Ooh, uh, we've yeah, ever is. done. All right. Question number two was... My head is heavy. <laughs> Hypertext markup language. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> Andrew? I didn't know it, so I'm not going to, yeah. Marquez is one. literally sweating right now. Uh, sweating and correct. <laughs> hey. Oh, my God. The answer is HTML does stand for hypertext markup language. All right. So final scores. Marquez has eight. Andrew, four. That's got to be hotter than it was when I was on the show. Yeah. Sean, dude, what are you doing? Man, every day? Every day. Twice a day sometimes? That's oh, insane. Oh, man. Shout out, Sean Evans. Sheesh. I my, tried to like not not do hurt. like for my pride. I tried to not have milk or ice cream just to do it like how he does it, and I couldn't. I Shout couldn't out do to it. Philip DeFranco. 
he oh, did yeah. the whole show the whole thing and then three wings at the end what an right? animal yeah he's also not human that's insane that's not that's pain all right let's outro this yeah <laughs> well we appreciate you guys sticking through if you were on on audio only for this um i'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's a lot of heavy breathing on this yeah. episode. <laughs> a lot of, I don't know if you could hear the sweat, but <laughs> we'll be back next week. We obviously have a bunch of stuff coming up. WWDC is around the corner. A lot of tech yeah. happening soon. So um, thanks for uh, having a fun week with us on Waveform. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, and catch you guys next week. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We are partnered with Vox Media, and our intro music was created by Vane Sill. So.